I'm at home with my family. It's me, David Harrison. My uncle Vinny, my dad David Harrison Sr. We're sitting down watching football with cans of beer on the coffee table. My ma, Leanne Harrison's in the kitchen making us lunch. Uncle Vinny keeps an eye on his latest fling. He grows through them like uh, women go through chocolate, gotta say. And don't take this the wrong way, but I've missed them. Every single one of these tadpoles. They're my family. I always want and need them around me. I'm an ex-army guy. I spent the last three years in and out of Afghanistan. Came home yesterday after my last ever tour to find my people. All there at the airport, waiting to greet me. Their childish grins made me think they were my childhood nightmares come alive. I'm not kidding. Dad was the first to approach me until he got elbowed by my ma. More on mommy dearest to come. Anyway, she hugged me first. It was tight, and I needed to be airlifted to a local hospital after to get the air pumped back into me. Dad then tried to hug me again, but my Uncle Vinny pulled the same stunt as Mom did. <laughs> no one cared. We liked it. I didn't know they missed me so much. Honestly, I was honored by the presence. I'm one lucky son of a gun. Or so I thought until I woke up to find my mom sitting on my bed, holding a picture of a woman. Sure, she was pretty enough, but why did she have the image like she was my destiny or some shit like that? <laughs> I smiled and nodded my head. First thing to shoot out of her mouth, You're meeting her. I ain't even awake yet. My mom's ordering me to go on a date with some chick I never even met. I wasn't so scared of her. I'd refuse her demand like a shot. But sadly, I was. What? You ever seen her on a hunting trip with me? No. You also haven't seen blood spilling out of her shirt after she's accidentally shot my dad for the hundredth time. That shit is real, folks. It's real. So my mom started jabbering about her Jesus. Yeah, like that even exists. Jesus apparently wanted me to help find love like she did with my dad. What a lot of crap in my ear. My dad didn't love her. At least that's what he always claimed to me anyways. That's why dad's a personal hero of mine. I love you, dad. Stay strong. Your best bud is back. I'm uh, gonna do my mom's voice so you have a clear picture of how she sounds. Of course, it would help if you hated her like I do right now, too. Seriously. I need a team of haters sending her negative vibes, so the universe makes her conform to normality. David, you listen here. Your mom didn't raise no son of hers to die alone. So rule one of you as our only son is, you have to give us grandchildren. If you ignore that rule, then rule two comes into effect. We'll pressure you to point of suicide until you produce the grandchild. See how ridiculous this woman gets. Hang on, she wasn't done. If you fail to follow both rules, we have one last direction. It's a secret. And I won't tell you what it is because I don't want God to smite me. But it involves us kidnapping you, locking you in a barn with a call girl until you fulfill God's work and produce fruit. You'll do it if you care about us. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Leanne Harrison, my mother. After showering, I came out of the bathroom to find my Uncle Vinny sitting on the bed. <laughs> he patted the bed and said such delightful words as these to me. Vinny, nice package. I told you we ran in the family. If one of us balls weren't sawed off, I'd say we were all perfect. But uh, my dick's still there, so we are. I left. He's kidding, right? What on earth would saw off another man's balls unless they were in the mafia? Is my... No. <laughs> I ain't going there. I'm here to take you shopping. Your ma wants you to get dressed up to the nines for tonight. Not that anything you wear looks as good as it does on uh, me as it is you. Well, what's tonight? A triple date. I'm not dating anyone, Vinny. Eh, uh, your ma seems to think you are. She has high hopes. Plus, you have to come. Your dad's uh, betting big on the fact that you'll marry this chick your mom's chosen for you. What the fuck, Vinny? Hey, I'm betting against your dad, and I'm not losing my house. So make fast with your stupor and meet downstairs. Hurry. I double take. Yeah, this is a weird family. I say, look, I know this family. If they want me to do something, pfft, I can scream, shout, throw a tantrum. But eventually, I'll have to do what they want me to do. Plus, I... 
think ripping off the bandage quickly is better than slowly peeling it off. I think everyone would agree on that. So I guess I have to modify my intentions. I'll go on this date. It'll be disastrous, that's a guarantee. Especially if my Uncle Vinny and my parents have chosen my date. The plan is, I'll make my date hate me. Then I'll leave, knowing I'll never see or hear from her again. Oh, oh that's my kind of date. Although, uh, if I sense it goes badly, that's mm, not great, because then my mom will just hunt down another broad for me to date. So, really, there's no fucking wins for me here whatsoever. Hang on, tell me about this date. How hard is she? Would you date her? The answer is yes. I don't want her near me. I ain't ruining the surprise. Okay, then. Tell me something. Anything. Is she short like you? She also missing a personality like yourself? Are we gonna stand here, pretend you haven't just come out of the shower? That you're not buck naked under your towel? Get fucking dressed, and I'll tell you all about her in the mall. I'll be downstairs. Hurry the fuck up. Vinny stands and exits. Woof. Remind me never to get in a fight with him. The dude is ruthless. We're at the mall. It's me with my Uncle Vinny and Ma. My Ma is in a heated argument with one of her store clerks. This, by the way, is a prescribed program with my Ma. She uh, walks into a department store, she jibber-jabbers, and then sweet-talks the clerk into giving her store discount. Well, I've got news for her. This one ain't playing. She might be about to pull out a gun by the way she's staring at Ma. I ain't walking there if it kicks off. I'm just gonna enjoy the show and chill. Mom can fend for herself. Anyway, Ma does the discount thing all the time, and I gotta say she's a pretty high success rate. So I gotta hand that to her. She's a queen bee of retail shopping. I'm still waiting to hear more about the girl, Vinny. How often does she reject you before you palmed her off to me? If you're brave enough to say more than once... I'll pretend I'm not laughing inside. I promise. Ah, right. I'd be lying. I laugh. <laughs> Vinny glares. All I'm gonna say to you is you know her. Way to narrow it down to everyone in this godforsaken town. I need some more information. She was your first love, David. Cheryl Thomas. Cheryl Thomas was your first love? You do know your Uncle Greg did that DNA test and she's not your first cousin. Oh, right. Ew, and I was lying. It's not true, although my memory of her is sketchy at best. Might be true after all. I laugh again. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny looks on seriously. Relationships aren't a thing to laugh about, David. Especially when your parents are getting to an age where they expect grandkids from their only kid. All right. Question. Is my date blonde or a redhead? I think I might be, uh... About to narrow it down, if you say either. She's a brunette, and the first two initials of her name start with B-E. Okay, I'm getting something. It's coming at me telepathically, and I'm screaming that I haven't a hell of a chance of knowing who my date is. Always the funny boy. Somebody should wipe that smile off your face. Don't make me volunteer to do it. In fact, I'm going to have to do this. My Uncle Vinny grabs me around the collar and slaps me across the head with his other hand. That funny boy attitude ends now, you hear me? This date you're going on is with an exceptional young lady to our family. You'll treat her with the utmost respect she deserves, but if you don't, I come looking for you and I fucking hurt you. Are we clear on that? I nod my head. What was that about? Before I can ask, my mom walks over. Is everything okay? Ask him. Is everything okay, David? Do I need to pull both of your ears and put you in the naughty corner? That might be fun. No, no, I'm kidding. Ma, we're groovy. I'll go wait in the car. I meant what I said, David. My Uncle Vinny walks off. Not before stealing a pair of socks from the store. Nice. Classy. My Uncle Vinny, folks. The dick. Listen, darling. Don't take his behavior to heart. He's dealing with a few issues at the moment. Is it serious? Does he need cheering up? I could uh, send him a stripogram if you promise to let me be there when he receives it. It's not serious. Let's remember, I'm your mother. Please. Sorry. Is there a male version of a stripogram? 
ignore that. Hang on. Is there? You know what? I'll Google it later. Mommy gets bored at work. She could use her own cheering up. What's Vinny's big secret? He'll tell you when he's good and ready to talk about it. For now, I got good news for you. Your dad has decided to take me salsa dancing. And in return, I've promised to leave him for that younger dancer if they hit on me. Mommy's at that age where she's not too fussy anymore. Okay, I'll just pass that information on to dad then. I take up my phone and line up a text. My mom grabs it. She glares at me, but there's a sign of amusement in her. I thought you were being serious. We both laugh as my mom puts a hand on my shoulder. Don't take this the wrong way, but it's great to have you back. I never thought I'd say that and mean it. Uh, why would I take that the wrong way? You're my ma. I've been to war. I've been shot at. Shouldn't you automatically miss me? Usually a mother would, but then she does a funny thing of remembering your teenage years and the devil's fury enters her heart. I loathe you, son. Oh, thanks, ma. I loathe you, too. My ma hugs me. Every man needs a mom like mine. That said, I wouldn't share her with you so you can go to hell. A store assistant walks over. Ma'am, we're able to give you that discount you wanted, but the manager said, if you ever attempt to choke me again, you'll be barred from entering the mall. Is that understood? Perfectly. We'll take the expansive black suit in the window and the designer shoes, too. The store assistant walks off, rolling her eyes. Later, I'm walking down the street to the restaurant with my Uncle Vinny. Since Mom and Dad pulled out of the triple date, it's just Vinny, his date, me and my date, B.E., whoever she is. I'm telling you, this is disaster written all over it. Which doesn't mean it won't be fun either, so I guess I can suck it up and enjoy it like a Marvel movie. A tall brunette. Big tits, low-cut skirt runs over, screaming. It's entirely focused on my Uncle Vinny. He's taken slightly aback. Vinny, is that you? My Uncle Vinny sends me a look. Do you know this broad? And I shrug. Nope, you're on your own. Good luck, champion. Hey, introduce us. The brunette laughs. Vinny would never forget my name. He said it was the most majestic name ever. Then my uncle won't mind repeating it. Oh, it's been such a long time. The last time we saw each other, I blew you on that roller coaster. Okay, she didn't actually say that, but her eyes definitely looked like she did. Uh, you must be Taylor. Nope, guess again. Here's a hint. The brunette licks her lips, okay? This is creepy and fucking awkward. It's like being trapped in the bathroom while your parents have sex. Oh, now I remember. Would you just give me one second with my nephew? It won't be long. Don't go anywhere. My Uncle Vinny takes my arm, leads me to the side. My Uncle Vinny smiles at the brunette, then follows it up with his own licking of lips. Well, I've just about lost all respect for the man. He's a fucking embarrassment. Here's a score, wise guy. I ain't got a clue who this broad is. But she's tall, I'm short, she's easy, and I'm not about to stand here and complain. So you want a banger? Hey, your uncle doesn't disrespect women like that. But in the case of the brunette, oh, I really do. So why are you asking for my permission? I'm not. But the woman waiting for me at the restaurant is a future mother of my children. I need you to cover my ass for me. Just tell her I had a family emergency. Can you do that? Sure. Anything else? You need me to be a bodyguard while I choose not to lie to her as she comes after you? You know what, smarty pants? I'll just text her on my way to this brunette's house. Now, where might one find protection? I ain't gonna ride without protection. There's a chemist behind you. See ya. I walk off. My Uncle Vinny walks over to the brunette and kisses her hand. They both walk into the chemist in a hurry. I reach the restaurant lobby on my own and there's a woman at the bar alone watching the lobby doors. Huh. She's uh, pretty. Let's hope she's waiting for me. I walk over to her and take a closer look. I think she resembles someone I used to know. But the name doesn't seem to want to come to me right now, so who the hell is she? David? The woman stands up. 
She looks irate. If looks could kill, she'd murder me on the spot. This doesn't bode well. But seriously, who is she? What the hell are you doing here? Oh, no, fuck, I know her. Abort! Pretend you're getting a call. I need a stroke right now. Anything. No, oh, fuck, should I run? Tell me you're not my date. Oh, I wish I could. All right, here's the story. Beth and I were high school sweethearts. We dated throughout high school until I left her at 18 to join the army. She was heartbroken, of course. I mean, who could blame her? We didn't officially end things, though. We wanted to do long-distance crap, but that never works. You won't be surprised to know. It fucking didn't. She later went to college, where she met someone and basically cheated on me. Eh, yeah, long story. I found out what she did, so I reacted by getting my revenge on her when I came back to town. I did something with her sister. So I fucking thought, but no, it wasn't. It wasn't her sister. The next day after the thing, I woke up to find out the person I'd slept with was, in actual fact, her ma, rather than her sister. What, are y'all about to throw rocks at me, are ya? Yeah, I guessed as much. Her mom was in the middle of a messy divorce and we got our freak on. I regretted it. Wasn't planning to tell Beth, however, Beth took her dad's side in the divorce, so her mom thought it would be a great idea if she punished Beth. By the way, I know moms out there have a lot to deal with, but it's probably not a good idea to do what Beth's mom did. In fact, it's a terrible idea. So don't fucking do it! Sorry, I needed to rent that out. I'm done now. So anyway, on her 21st birthday, Beth's mom, Jocelyn, gifted Beth a giant three-foot canvas she'd drawn of us in bed post-sex. You don't want to start throwing things now, right? I'll allow it. Just don't throw your goddamn TVs at me. It could really hurt someone, so don't do it! Beth was upset, as you would imagine. She hunted me down and set my car on fire. The police arrested her, but as I knew her lifelong plan was to be a lawyer, I dropped the charges. See? I'm charitable, so don't hate me. We haven't seen each other in over ten years. And now, thanks to my dumb parents, I'm face to face with her on a date. God have mercy on my soul. I see you're still the scum of the earth. I see you're still as lovely as ever. Oh... You wore makeup for me. Yeah, I sure did. Why did our parents set us up? I don't know. What I do know is I'll probably end up murdering them by the end of the night. We should make a plot to kill them. I know a guy who sells rifles. I was kidding. Yeah, yeah, so was I, I think. Ugh. Hell, I wasn't. Let's call my guy. Okay, I'm scared to death. Thanks for that lovely feeling. Beth smiles. She's so pretty, her hair is down, and she looks good in her tight dress. Plus, she's funny. I think I may end up liking this chick again before the night's done. Ugh. Never thought that would happen again. Anyway, uh, I won't keep you. Wait, how is Afghanistan? Oh, like a trip to Disneyland. You should go. You'll love this Taliban. They're, uh, such easy-going people. Funny. I heard Terry Maguire died. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. Why? He hated you. I know. I'm just trying to be kind. I hated him too. So, were you actually excited about this date? A little. But now I'm just depressed. I just want you to crawl back into your cave and die. Oh, I feel you. I'm exactly the same. Beth laughs. Hey, I never got to thank you for, uh... Mm, dropping the charges. My whole law career could have disappeared if... Hey, I owed you. It's all water under the bridge. I hope one day I can repay you. How about you repay me by uh, starting this date with me? How about you choose something else not akin to having your eyes gouged out? Come on, please, I've missed you. Beth rolls her eyes, but I'm... Eh, she's still non-committal. Do you know this is the first time we've seen each other since my mom revealed you slept with her? Yeah, I do. Are we going to talk about that? I have a few jokes on the subject if you want to hear them. Oh, please say you do. I'm good. Oh, how's mommy dearest? Eh, she drank herself to death. At least that's what I hope for. I don't know. I'm only in touch with my dad and my sister. Oh, that's sad. Well, she wasn't exactly a great mother, was she? A waiter walks over. Sir, 
Madam, your table's ready. Just give us two more minutes to talk. Uh, should I go, or do you feel some sort of magic between us? You imagine things. The sight of you is like seeing a Dalek come out of your stomach. Oh, so you're feeling it too. <laughs> I knew it. Dick. I laugh. Beth's at ease with me. We've always been like this. So at ease with each other. I never thought I'd admit this before tonight, but I really have missed her. I missed her quite a lot. Damn, I'm a girl all of a sudden, Jesus. Should we take the assignment to know each other? Yeah, I'm kind of intrigued to know what happened to you. You have a lot of bags under your eyes, and I need to figure out the story behind it. There's no story. Why would you want to do that? You know, so I can use it as an excuse to mock you behind your back. You witch! Do you always insult your dates? Well, it depends on how tragic they're willing to be around me. And since you're still here, I'm guessing you're uh, very much inclined to go beyond the threshold of being that today. You're definitely more cheeky since we last saw each other. No, um, not that it's a good thing because it's not. I'm getting the vibe that you're aroused by me. Is it true? Repulsed is closer to the mark, but sure. I'll let you think that if it'll help you with your mental health. Ooh, ouch. Someone wants to strike me today. It's probably her unique way of hiding her insecurities. Can you blame this chick when you're being a giant douchebag? I'll concede that point. You're welcome. That's how much of a gentleman I am. Beth laughs hard. Do you want to do this? Oh, don't you? Yeah. If you promise, it'll just be talking. What else will it be? I wouldn't want to lower my batting average by nailing you. Oh, the sad thing is you believe you can resist me. Okay. Hey, we'll have that table. The waiter leads us to a table and we sit down. Before you think this is a foregone conclusion, you should know I have a son. He's ten years old, and I've had him nine months after we broke up, so I'm not quite sure whether he's your son or not. And with that colossal bombshell, we fade out. As we were. Beth just told me she had a child nine months after breaking up ten years ago. This child could be mine. I know it's a shock. Oh, that's an understatement. Do you have any questions? I know if I was the guy in your position, I'd want to ask questions, so... <laughs> wind me with your questions. Are you sure there weren't any other guys in the picture when we, uh, did the dance? Well, there was your Uncle Finney... Boy, he was a real tiger in bed. I couldn't walk for days. I still can't. He had so much fire. Ignore me as I swoon at the memories. I stand up. I've had enough of this. Okay, I'm done here. Wow, so you're gullible now? Good to know. I'm going to use that information to terrorize you from now on. Thanks for that assist. Beth smiles as I roll my eyes. To confirm... You were kidding? Yeah, sit the fuck down. I sit back down, looking relieved. Still, I can't actually stare at Beth. This is fucked up. Look, there weren't any other guys in the picture. This chick was an algebra queen back in her school days. So she's smart enough to work out dates of her intercourses. You're welcome for knowing someone cleverer than you. I breathe in and release much more relaxed again. I admit, that's a relief. Beth laughs. I'm staying serious. I'm not in a laughing mood at the moment. This thing is serious. My whole life could be about to change, and if it is, I need to know by how much. Oh, God. I can't be a dad, Beth. I don't know where to buy the formula. I lose keys, or so probably lose your baby. Oh, that's all right. He's been computer chipped like a dog. So... You'll be able to find him just as easy as a dog. Well, that's one plus. You need to work out when I'm joking and when I'm being serious. Kids aren't microchipped. I mean, <laughs> Elon Musk's kid probably is, but the rest of us folks aren't microchipped like the Terminator. I know that. Now. Also, let's remember he's not a baby. He's about to turn 11. He's going to be taller than your ma, 
but not taller than me because I have a superior gene pool to count on. That's right, you're looking at Wonder Woman. I'm freaking superior. I've got money if that's what you want. I could give you money, you could take it. We never have to do this again. Oh, such a gentleman. A gentleman should always please a lady. I read that in a book. Okay, fine. I heard it in a line of dialogue in Downtown Abbey. Oh, so you're also a lady in that scenario? I left. I really miss this woman. Ah, but come on, you're hearing this chat too. You have to admit I'm talking sense. Look, I'm not asking you to be his dad. I'm just letting you know that there's a tadpole out there with your genes. Yeah, I have a son. Who I really hope when he gets older doesn't get your massive nose. Hey, come on. It's not massive. That said, my ma offered to pay me to have surgery on it, so maybe I'm just talking bull here. Yeah, I'll stop that. I'm so relaxed being here with you. Why did you get so reverting and cool? I think before I joined the army. No, I would have noticed that. Oh no, you're David's clone. And the real David is buried somewhere. I knew there had to be an explanation to this freak show. I just knew it. Insult me. That's an excellent way to make me relax in your presence. Back on our child for a sec. You can relax. Nothing has to happen or change straight away. Yeah, good to know. But I insist on meeting him at least. Great. But we can take things as slowly as you want or need. There's no pressure cooker forcing us to make quick decisions, so please take a deep breath. I take a deep breath, and it feels weird, but I like it. If I thought about baseball, too, uh, it'll make it less girly. I do that, yet no names of baseball legends pop up in my head. The only clear image I get is of Beth. Oh, I need to shut that down. I hope you're admiring me while you're breathing. I let less important mortals do that around me. Oh, that's a compliment. <laughs> There's less of that to come in the future. Yikes. You really need a personality transplant. <laughs> you cheeky shit. This beauty might as well have been deployed by NASA. She's that gorgeous. Beth flicks her hair over her shoulder and then pumps up her breasts. Feel free to get aroused. I know you want to. And yuck. Beth shakes her head. She's amused. I like to make her smile. It's one of the things that first attracted me to her back then when we dated. A smile still does the trick even now. It's a moment of quiet as the waiter brings us some appetizers. It's toasted bread wrapped in ham. The waiter asks Beth if she'd like some wine. Beth tells him the wine she wants and the waiter walks off to get it. Aren't you going to ask me what our son's name is? Oh, uh, why? Beth lifts her eyebrows. What? You thought I wanted to know him? That's madness. I laugh as Beth throws a napkin at me, and it lands on my head. That could be a Vogue look. You're way more handsome. I laugh. Beth gets serious. Hey, I'm giving you clues to the questions you should be asking me. Look, it's still hard to process this. Yeah, well, I'm trying to stop the state from being awkward. You should be proud that one of us is trying to be an adult here. Not that I would ever volunteer for that lame rule in front of you. I like being a child around you. <sighs> Fine. I'll play ball by conceding. What's the kid's name? Luke. Cute, right? I would have called him after you, but I thought, why should I? I hated your name. So I didn't. Luke. Yeah, that's a cute name. Hang on. Did you name your son after my cousin Luke? Yep. He died around 11 months before Luke was born, and I wanted to pay my homage to him. So just so you know, I wouldn't have done the same if roles were reversed. Your name still sucks. That's certified by God. Then why is David mentioned in the Bible? Jesus was drunk on his red wine when he wrote it. I left. I'm not even sure what this conversation is about now. It's rolling towards a cliff and it's about to fall off. It's kind of you to name him after Luke. Thank you. Well, you were kind to me when I asked you to drop the charges. I owed you. Or even now. Why do I not remember you being this cool back then? I wasn't back then. But this chick for sure is now. I mean, hello. I have every man's attention in here. 
Except that man kissing that waiter. What a strange restaurant. Beth laughs. I... I gotta say, I'm falling for Beth again. This woman is bewitching me. She can heal the sick with just one word. I look at you and kill you with both. Yikes. Beth is amazing. I really want to make something by being with her, but maybe... Maybe I... I'll forget it. I'm losing it. Must be my male hormones kicking in again. Please ignore me. Let's get back to where we left off in the chat. I still can't believe you went out of your way to name a firstborn after my cousin. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I should worship you for that or something, but nah. That might motivate you to be more annoying. I can't risk that on my mental health. She laughs. <laughs> Cheeky. Hey, I was being serious here. We both laugh out loud. I don't know how I survived for so long without this woman in my life. She's incredible. I know my ma might find this strange coming out of my lips, but... I think I now believe in miracles. Oh, there is a god. Angels live among us. Okay, I'm losing it here, I think. Let's use our brains, please, David. We shouldn't get too sentimental here. It's not a good color on a military guy. It makes you seem very weak. But then again, that might be funny, and I want to see that. I'm teary. I wipe tears off my cheeks. It's the emotion of being here with her. God, why am I such a girl here? If my ex-pals in the military could see me now, they'd be laughing their heads off right about now. I'm fucking stupid. So will you allow me to encourage Luke to pursue a football career? You want that billion dollar check, right? <laughs> Not with my son, I don't. Got it? He wants to follow in the footsteps of his favorite person. His mommy. Well, he wants to be a lawyer? Yep, just to piss you off. The silence for a moment. Although I can convince him against that idea if you're confident he can be a billionaire football player like LeBron James. Uh, LeBron is a basketballer. Can you do it or not? God, I want my Bel Air home. Pro bono pays little. I can't afford anything, God. Beth laughs. She used to pretend to play bimbos in front of me when we dated back in the day. She did a killer Paris Hilton impression too. This folk is a chick you want in your life. Hey, how much do you need? I was kidding. I have more money than I need. I'm good. I'm horrible at reading you. <laughs> you don't say. I take a sip of my wine. Oh, it tastes fancy. I'm not really into it. I need a beer or something. Anything to stop this beautiful disaster from ending or... Well, getting even weirder. Do you have any more questions you want to ask me? <clears throat> uh, yeah, just one. Why wait all this time to tell me? That's a question for your Uncle Vinny and your ma. It, that means what exactly? It means you should ask them why I've kept secrets from you for ten years. But why would they want me to stay away from my son? Who said they did? You're hitting that they did. I think you're doing that all by yourself here. So my family has known about Luke for ten years? Listen, it's getting late and I have work in the morning. I need the truth, Beth! Beth stands up and looks to exit. I grab Beth's wrist to stop her from leaving and then let go when blood rushes to my groin. Nice. I need the truth, Beth. I deserve that at least. Look, all you need to know is that I told your Uncle Vinny about Luke ten years ago. And that was around the time I was engaged to Rachel? That's what I remember. Your uncle didn't want me to tell you myself because I could mess up your relationship with Rachel, so I didn't. I protected your marriage. I still had the freaking right to know. Yeah, well, I didn't think it was fair for us to be the third wheel in your union, so I left it alone. Don't take your anger out on me. You're a piece of work, you know that? If you're going to insult me, then I won't be here. I'll leave. I had a freaking child, Beth, who you cut away from me. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm trying to work out why you cut that vital information from me. Well, then, if you want answers, go talk to your fucking family. Leave me the hell out of it. I'll never forgive you for this. I don't care. I did nothing wrong. My conscience is clear. I scoff. You're yeah, fucking right. You had my son. You keep away from his father. You make up some bullshit about my parents keeping him away from me, and then you magically expect me to believe you had no bad intentions in all this. I'm stupid, Beth, but I'm not that fucking stupid. 
I stand up and look to the exit. Before you go looking for a fight with Vinny, you need to know there's a solid reason for why they kept secrets from you. Really? Sure. It's all your fault. I trust my family. They never hurt me. <laughs> well, that bulldozer will hit you on the head. Just don't say I was lying to you because I wasn't. Beth takes out a business card, she slams it down on the table and makes her exit. I watch her leave, and I'm lost in her for a second. Then the lies I've just heard hit me. I need answers, and I need them quick. One thing I know is someone will pay for all this. That's a fact. I take the card and walk out of the restaurant. I hail a cab. I get in and sit down. Give my Uncle Vinny's address, and the cab pulls away. Look, if there's one man I know who had a hand in hiding things from me, it's my Uncle Vinny. I'll threaten him with death if I have to until I get the truth out of him. Later, I bang on Vinny's door. There's a ten-second delay. Vinny's next-door neighbor comes out of his apartment. Jack Tyler is in his 80s. He's a broad-shouldered, tall and menacing looking. Yet, this guy can pound you to the ground and laugh for days without a moment of regret or compassion for you. He fought in Vietnam. Yeah, he's a former Trump supporter. Till he saw what Trump was doing to little kids on the border. Jack is a ladies' man, too. He still gets women even at this age. The younger woman, too. Kind like my Uncle Vinny. I think my Uncle Vinny models his whole life on this man. Oh, I can't blame him. Jack has a lot of old-time stories that would make your balls want to disappear up your ass. Well, excuse my French, but I mean that shit. It's not to be messed with. Do you know what time it is? There are families with kids in this building. Find some fucking heart. Hey, this doesn't concern you, old timer. Jack steps up to me. Say that again. Let's see which dunk the police find you dead in. He might be old, but I'm scared of this guy. I ain't joking. I take a step back to compose myself. Yeah, that's what I thought. There's a key under the mat. Get in. Do your business and then fuck off before I take care of you myself. Do we understand each other? Good. Jack goes back towards his apartment door and closes the door. I hear you laughing like children. Look, you really want to see Bruce Lee kick a young man's ass? No? Be quiet about it and leave me in peace. I kneel and take out the key to Vinny's apartment door. I open the door and there he is. My Uncle Vinny. Alone. He's sleeping on his armchair. I clap my hands as loud as I can to wake him up. Vinny wakes up. How the hell did you get in here? He sees the fury on my face. I walk up to him and Vinny stands up and squares up to me. He might be short, but this man will fight anyone to their death. Not that I'm about to fight him here, I'm not. And no, I'm not scared of him. Take a step back. It's not related to my last statement. Grow up, please. What do you want? My broad's in the bedroom waiting for me. You know about Beth's kid being mine. I, I did not. What makes you think that? She told me. She also told me that my whole family knew about it for over a decade. Then fucking tell me! Then he sighs. He walks over to his drink station. He takes out two glasses. Picks up a bottle of whiskey and pours us two drinks. He slides my drinks over to me. I take it and throw the glass against the wall. I'm not in the playing mood. Why has this family been keeping things from me? Look, we did no such thing. Oh? So you're declaring me to be stupid? I need to know why I've been kept out of my son's life for the last ten years! Then he takes a sip of his drink. He looks a step away, but I book his exit. He sighs, thinking of delay tactics to get him out of this ordeal. Well, that's not happening. The truth will come out today. Vinny, I'm not dancing around this issue anymore. Start talking, or I pick up Vinny's baseball bat. I start breaking your bones. You're too emotional for this, David. Maybe we should do this in the morning in front of your parents. Let's put a date in our diaries and we'll all get together and- I wanna fucking do this now, Vinny! Are you really sure you want to do this? If you are, I'm going to say some hurtful things to you, which will make you hate me. I don't want you to hate me. I don't want to hate you either. I walk up to Vinny and grab him by the robe. 
fucking tell me why you kept me away from my kid. No! Then he angrily pushes my hand away. You forced us to lie to you. You weren't interested in anything or anyone ten years ago but Rachel. She was the only chick you cared about then. What does Rachel have to do with you fucking lying to me? You were about to get married to Rachel ten years ago. I discussed the whole situation with Beth and your parents. Beth wanted to tell you the truth, but she had doubts that you would manage to raise your kid while being with Rachel. Were you the one that raised those doubts in the first place? Fucking no. Look, we know at the time, if you had a choice between Rachel and the kid, you'd choose Rachel all day, not my words. Then whose? Beth's. I hang my head in fury. I punch your face. You're buying a new vase. Yeah, I'll get right on that. We had things because we knew you had no interest in being in a kid's life if it came to a choice. You can hate me all you like, but you know we made the right choice for you. So my parents knew too. They knew all along that Beth had the grandchild or so. Oh. So they have seen Luke behind my back all this time without telling me the truth. Yeah, something like that. I turn my back to face the wall. My Uncle Vinny takes another glass and pours me another whiskey drink. He then walks over to me and spins me around, but I push him away. The drink lands on his chest. I know you're mad, but do that again and we'll do some fucking business in here. Okay, sunshine? You want to walk out of here alive? Behave yourself. I push Vinny back again. This time, Vinny sucks me in the gut and I fall to the ground. I warned ya. Next time, there won't be another warning. You all should have told me. I stand back up again. Well, there's maybe one more significant reason why we didn't. Oh, it better be good. Or else what, pretty boy? What are you gonna do about it? Why don't you pipe down before Ali nails you to the canvas? Just tell me the reason. Remember when Rachel was dying? Oh, yeah. I think I remember the most tragic weeks of my life. <sighs> More mouth like that, and I'm going to start hitting balls. I shake my head and take a seat on the couch. Then he joins me. He sits on the opposite couch facing me. Rachel's mom saw your ma and dad with Luke and Beth. And as you know, Vanessa knew everyone and everything in this town. So one day she drove to Beth's house and got in a heated argument with Beth's dad. It was about Luke. Anyway, during the heated discussion, Beth's dad revealed you were Luke's dad. Yet the father still didn't have a clue for another ten years. Rachel, bless her soul, was dying of cancer. So when Mother Vanessa got scared that we all might tell Rachel you had a son with Beth. Vanessa didn't want Rachel to know her husband would have a better life without her. I'm still waiting for the good stuff. Your dad was in the hospital after his heart attack and the medical bills were piling up. Leanne, my sister, asked Vanessa for a loan, but... But Vanessa wanted something in return. She wanted your ma never to reveal the secret of you being Luke's father. You gotta be fucking kidding me. I'm not. Your ma was in dire straits. Your dad needed money for his surgery. Listen, Leanne had no other options. She took the deal only for Vanessa to have her sign a contract that meant she would never ever tell you the truth about you being a father to best kid while her Rachel was alive. So, why couldn't you have just told me about that when Rachel died? The deal included Vanessa being alive too. Jesus fucking Mary, this ain't good, Vinny. I stand the fuck up. I kick Vinny's TV off its stand. It falls and crashes and I walk towards the kitchen pick up a fruit bowl and throw two apples at Vinny's head. It misses. Vinny doesn't react. He stays sat down. He's in control. Listen, sit the fuck down, David. The story isn't finished. At this point, I just want to hit something or someone hard in the face until they're in a fucking coma. I'm sorry, but this day has been fucked up from start to finish. And I'm sick of it. One day, Beth was doing your mom's paperwork for her new mortgage and she found the contract your mom signed for Vanessa's deal. Well, Beth, she was heartbroken. She'd always wanted to tell you, but it was your ma who would always convince us not to. Beth felt betrayed big time. Oh, and that's why she left town. Yeah, she left town and then seven months ago she came back into town. Vanessa died of a stroke last year and her deal with your ma was only relevant when she was alive. The contract no longer mattered. 
So we all decided to tell you now. All right. Except you didn't. What you did instead is you set me up on a date with Beth so she could tell me because you were fucking cowards. The lord of your fucking cowards. Look, you've nailed it. Look, we're, we're fucking sorry for what we did. No one wanted to hurt you. We love you. But you need to know if we didn't take the deal Vanessa offered us, your dad wouldn't be alive right now. So count your fucking blessings. He's alive. You have a son. Be with him. Yeah, look, it's that easy. Yeah, well, I imagine it was like Sophie's choice for your ma, too. Look, I'm sure your ma will fill you in on anything else you need to know, but for me, right now, this whole business is done and dusted with. I'm free of it. See yourself out and... Oh, don't be a fucking pussy about this. I pick my Uncle Vinny's TV and put it back on the stand. It works fine. Take a brush and pan to clean the broken glass off the floor and then sit down for three minutes and order my Uncle Vinny a new leather jacket. It's the one they was looking at at the mall earlier. I apologize for my behavior and make plans for lunch on Sunday at Mars. He promises to bring beers to lunch and we hug it out and I leave. Yeah, this is how we handle this shit in the family. We make up as good as we fight. No, that, <laughs> well, that's how we, much we love each other. And I walk out of that house. My Uncle Vinny takes out his phone and calls my ma. Hey, uh, it's Vin. David knows everything. It's all you from here on out. Good luck, Leanne. You'll fucking need it. Later, I'm on my parents' front porch. I open the house door and enter, and I hear noises coming from the den. I approach, but I can't see anything, so I switch on the lights. That, right there, was the worst fucking mistake of my life. Why? Because I've just caught my parents in the middle of sex. They're doing it on the fucking couch. They search the room for something sharp to stare into my eyes, yet my folks still haven't noticed me. The shit is like watching Simba watch his dad die in Lion King. And right now, I choose to observe that a billion times over than watching this horror show. Before you ask, I ain't looking, okay? My, my hands are on my face, covering the scene. I ain't a creep, okay? Despite me not yet revealing, I'm in the room. Ugh. I cough to get their attention, but nope. They're still going like rabbits on cocaine, so I cough louder. Then my ma sees me, she screams, she quickly covers herself. What's the matter with you? You catch your parents having sex and you stand around enjoying the show? Do you know how fucked up that is? Who made you like that, Vinny? I stayed quiet because we need to talk. Well, your mommy cares more about her next orgasm, so unless you want to see her aroused face again, you'll walk out of my house. Ma, I know about the lies you kept from me. I know about Beth's kid. I also know... You knew the kid was mine all along. David, I will not tell you again. Mommy doesn't have sex a lot. When she does, it's like she's going to outer space. Now you stick around and you'll see your dad eject his semen onto my boobies and ass. Is that what you want to see? Okay, that's enough of that. I get the fuck out of the house. I need this chat as much as a guy needs a bullet up their ass. Plus, I love my ma, but I'm not sticking around for fruity language like that. This man has a kid for who he is to set an example. I walk to my car and I get a text from Beth. Beth heard that my Uncle Vinny told me the whole truth and she wants to make sure I'm okay. Honestly, I don't want to see her. But I know if I head back to my apartment, Beth and Luke will be all I'll think about anyway. So there's no point hiding from this. I need to talk to make plans to move on to the next stage of this play. Just so we're clear, I don't blame Beth for any of this. I don't blame anyone. This is as much my fault as it is anyone else's. But I play fair in my fights. See, my ma raised the wise man. Oh, God, I just got an image of my ma's boobs. Kill me. Look, I've learned one thing about the past. It's this. You have to use your past to fuel your future. It's the only free energy source you'll ever get, but it's also the most usually you'll ever get too. But of course, no one will ever tell you that. So, in conclusion, the hurt, the pain, the anger I feel now about what happened will be turned into love. Well, that's all it's about at the end of the day. Love makes life worthwhile. It's the leaves on the tree. It's the ice cream after dinner, the trophy that your favorite sport team lifts after the end of the season. I feel pain. Sure, I do. 
but I also know there are plenty more hopes out there waiting for me than there is pain. So, I'm taking advantage of that hope. I'm gonna grab it, and I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna grab hope, but not before releasing all the pain that knocks on my door. This is life. You survive it by looking at the good the world has to offer. So let's fucking do that. I reach Beth's door and I knock on the door. It's midnight. She opens it. She's wearing the robe and she smiles at me and moves aside for me to enter. I enter and we head to a den where I sit on the couch. Beth's wearing a revealing robe. I start thinking of my grandma. You know, to block any unwanted thoughts. I might be a man, but I respect the women I'm with. <laughs> As should you, and I'm gay for saying that. Beth licks her fingers to get my attention. I've told Luke about you. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Well, you should feel pretty happy. He's your fucking son. It's not like he's Godzilla facing you in a wrestling ring. I meant I don't feel great about him hating me for not being in his life. He's always known who you were. Oh, really? Yeah. I wanted him to know where he came from. I've worked as a pro bono lawyer most of my life. So I've seen how hard it is for kids not to have their parents around. And even though I didn't know when you'd meet Luke, I always knew you would. But did he know he'd meet me? Well, I told him he would. Thank you, lucky stars. I kept my promise. We're not all angels, you know. There's a smile on my face. But then it disappears as soon as it arrives. This whole thing is a train wreck. I'm not even sure what I'm doing here so late. You're probably tired. I'm not. I'm actually wired. And to make fast and talk to me here. Uh, sorry. That was a lame attempt to do Vinny's voice. What if I'm not good enough to be his dad? You probably aren't. I mean, duh. Not when we're comparing you to this monster. Beth points to herself, and then goes to kiss her biceps. Would you rather pay homage to me by kissing it? You make me hate you. Look, I think you'll be a good dad. Why do you say that? Because, like new parents, you'll learn new things along the way. Early on, you'll think, question everything, and probably burn out because of it. Spoilers, that's not fun. But then, eventually... As time goes by, your thoughts will become gut reactions, and then before you know it, you're a pro like Super Mom here. Huh. But seriously, don't expect to be as great as me because when you get to that position of thoughts, I will strike you down, rip out your heart, and eat it like a zombie. Beth does an evil laugh. I stare at her for a moment. Yeah, <laughs> I think I might be falling for her again. I'm not sure. <clears throat> well, thank you for whatever show this is. I just have one request for you to begin your fatherhood journey. It's pretty big, so listen up. Or pay the price of instant death. Beth doesn't even laugh again. As she does, that hair falls in front of her eyes, and without thinking, I pull back and realize my mistake. I quickly pull my hand away. Uh, what is the request? That you, my dear, keep my precious son alive. Until he's old enough to go to college and get drunk enough to die in his sleep, why would anyone want that for their son? Think through your shit. And I'm a lawyer, too. I laugh for a beat. The tension is broken. Look, your parents' contract or not, I should have let you know a lot sooner about Luke. I won't forgive myself for that. But you can, so why aren't you doing it? Do it now. You're right. You shouldn't forgive yourself. Hey, I'm being nice here. You know that happens once in a blue moon or never, never land. Oh, so you've developed that admirable trait in ten years? Did you have to do heavy-handed astronaut training for it because it's the only course that would uh, get that change out of you? Listen, smarty pants, you're begging me to slap you. I might be an elegant lady, but I'll slap the shit out of you. Do elegant ladies say that? so out of practice. I'd like to see you strike me. Is that a challenge? In high school, you know I could always take you on, right? And often it would end up with you bawling your eyes on my shoulder. Shall we repeat the riveting event? I put my hands up and surrender. Beth laughs. We both laugh. 
That's what I thought. Don't mess with this chick. So, can I meet him? He's in bed right now. I mean, when he's awake. I'd like to meet him. I'd, I'd like to make my first contact with the alien object. My son isn't an alien. Although he is a huge Star Trek fan. Maybe he is, after all. I'm kind of hoping Spock is his dad. Our son. Sorry. Force of habits. <laughs> Our. Nah. That sounds too weird for me, so I'll stick with my son for now. I left. Beth smiles back. Okay. I think this might be the beginning of a new love story between Beth and me. Now, oh, uh, hear me out. We have a connection you've heard enough already to know that's a fact. You've seen it. We're at ease with each other, and I know for sure if I was to kiss her right now, we end up making love on this couch like my parents were doing earlier. We fit together like gloves on a hand. A ring on a married woman's finger. We're good together like... Like, uh... Ah, oh, fuck, I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. Look, folks, a dream you dream alone is only a dream. But a dream you dream together is reality come alive. I kiss her. I kiss Beth. She doesn't kiss me back for a second, but I... I try hard to get her to kiss me back. Eventually... She gives in and kisses me back. There's instant heat from both of us, and I won't tell you where my blood's rushing to, but I'm a man, so you probably already know. We end the kiss. I smile. Beth doesn't smile. She's more concerned with the image of someone behind me. Wheeling himself into the room is Luke. He's in the wheelchair. This is my son. I had a bad dream. Who's he? Beth walks over to her son. Our son. Pardon me. Beth crouches down to talk to him. Luke, meet your dad, David. I wave my hand at the kid, and he waves back. I guess it's time to finally meet my son. <laughs> and as that thought pops into my head, we fade out. As we were, Luke has just wheeled himself over to me. My son is in a wheelchair. When did that happen? Has he always been like this? Was he involved in a horrible accident? I have to get to the bottom of that story. I have a funny feeling that the story isn't good. A boy this young shouldn't be in a wheelchair. It's not right. It's not right. As I think those thoughts, I realize Luke is speaking. He just asked me a question. Beth's gone to the kitchen to pour us orange juice and... I take a seat on the stool next to Luke. Uh, sorry, bud. Could you repeat the question? Do you like Star Trek? Th there's only one right answer. And do you think the man in front of you will get it right? <laughs> Dream on, Luke. He's a dud. Did I do something to annoy? Yes. Duh. <sighs> okay, fine. No, I just connect with you better if I insult you first. It's how I love people. Be thankful. Yeah. I want full custody. I tune out for a second as Beth laughs her head off. I'm concerned with trying to figure out what a Star Trek is. Oh, hang on. It's that Princess Leia and Darth Vader sci-fi crap that no one intelligent cares about. And yes, I'm a brainy person in that scenario. You laugh, but it's true. I am. Ugh. I'm ignoring you until you pipe down. But seriously, what is it with dorks who love that shit? Can't people just like sports better? Sports are a great way of understanding the human experience. 
I mean, it doesn't grow up with the whole sci-fi nonsense, and my life is okay. Then again, <clears throat> my ma often claims I'm dead inside, so what the hell do I know? <laughs> Nothing, that's probably what. Luke clicks his fingers to get my attention, and I wake up again. Are you a fan of Star Trek or not? No, I'm more into Star Wars. I'm really hoping he doesn't ask any more questions or it's about to get really embarrassing for me. Well, who's your favorite character and what's a Death Star? D did you hear a buzzing sound, Luke? I think we have a bee in the house. We better be careful. It might sting us. You haven't answered my question. Oh, there it goes again. We gotta start thinking about moving. So, do you know nothing about... Leonard Nimoy and Picard? Oh, of course he does. He's just about to tell what he knows. Beth smiles and I slowly panic. Is that sweat? Luke, I think your dad is sweating. Or he's thinking up a lie to get himself out of this bear trap. My kid smiles as if he thinks Beth is joking. When he realizes she might not be, his smile turns into a scowl. Luke sends me a death glare. Ah, oh, what have I done here? The kid looks like he wants to murder me. I... I don't want you to be my dad anymore. Mom, this man is an imposter. He doesn't belong here. Boo. 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 Boo you. Luke starts booing me. This kid is fucking weird. Luke, hon, everyone can't like the same things you do. It's like a god making two Beyonce's. Sure, it might be the more talented, hotter, and princess-like, but the world chooses to like the fake one. So I just have to accept the other bitch exists and steals my limelight. Just like you have to accept your dad hates everything you love in this world, including me. Oh, and I wonder why that is. Me too. It's like two brains working in unison. Aren't we awesome? I think we are. High five. Beth smacks me in the head. Oh! Your finger went in my eye. Oh, sorry. He's a loser, Mom. Do you like sports? We could bond over sports. I could take you to watch the New York Yankees midweek, if your mom will allow us to commute to the game. <sighs> she will not allow that. One, he hates sports. Two, he has school. And lastly, my mind would think your bonding session is a ruse for you to kidnap him. I'm fragile and broken like that. Your mom, has she ever had a specialist talk to her? I'm not crazy. People have got to stop coming up with that conclusion about me. It's like I get enough of the crazy name-calling at work. Enough already. So you're not into sports? Um, have a guess, Sherlock. I'm in a wheelchair. I'm losing this kid. I don't know what I've done to upset him, but he hates my guts. I can't let my son hate me. A couple of ex-army pals are in a wheelchair. Are you calling me a cripple? He's calling me names, Mom. I'm not. I'm trying to... <laughs> I'm not, you know. I can stand up and prove you wrong, but I won't because I can't be asked. Thank your lucky stars. Honey, no one's calling you that. And stop being hostile. Your dad's trying to be your friend. Hang on. Yeah, like he's the expert at making friends. Ugh, what a dumbass. Do you see this giant man standing in front of you? Yeah? Well, he's the man you're taking shots at. He kindly requests you quit it for the sake of continuing the illusion that he likes you, okay? Fine. I'll just insult you behind your back. And smile. I need a meme of you. Beth takes out her phone and takes a picture of me looking annoyed. Ooh, your dad's sexy when he's angry. Who would have thought? Luke, you have a cool wheelchair, but I know an ex-army pal who makes electric ones. I could probably get him to design one for you, you know, in return for your love. I laugh. Luke stares, looking miffed, of course. There's no winning this kid over, is there? Thanks for the offer, but I'm okay. I try to think of another thing I can give Luke. Beth touches me on the arm. She knows how desperate I'm getting. She wants me to stop thinking. Beth gestures with a hand for me to breathe in and out. I do as she asks, and I'm better. Huh, she's a genius. Who would have thunk it? Can I go now? You're both annoying. Damn it. I need to try one last time. Let's add comedy, too. Luke, the wheelchair could be uh, Star Wars themed if you like. What do you think? You think of what I'm thinking? You want to nominate me for Dad of the Year? Ha! I knew it. Thank your son. Best decision of your life. Hug me at once. Okay.
That's settled. I need you out of my life. Luke, apologize. Your dad's trying his best to connect with you. I hate him, Mom. Luke, it doesn't matter. He's your dad. You should respect him. I'm not laughing after saying that. Wow. I've really grown up. Both burps. Then again, what do I know? Sorry for what I said. <sighs> A man who I'll never accept. I must say you're a handsome kid. Okay, enough. Luke, go to bed. I'll check on you in a minute. Sleep tight. Love you. Luke traced the wheel away. Hey, is that a no on the electric wheelchair? I think it's more important to get yourself a personality than it is for me to get an electric wheelchair. Oh, come on, bud. Mom, I reject this man as my dad. Luke turns his wheelchair around and makes an escape. I turn to Beth, who winces. Firstly, congratulations, you just met your son. Oh, who hates my guts? Yeah, because you're trying too hard. You're going too fast with him. Look, David, you can't make up for not being in his life in one day. It takes time. It takes a lot of bonding sessions, talking about man stuff. It takes time building Lego toys and cooking meat on the grill. At this point, I have no idea why anyone would want to be a man. You're all so fucking boring. You are unbelievably bad. <sighs> You're right. I need to take it easy with him. I looked really needy there. Oh, hey. That was you on the pole. I am needy on the pole, aren't I? It's the thought of touching another man's... <laughs> you know what? It turns me on. I, I don't want to think about those images, thank you. Beth laughs, and I walk towards the kitchen. I get out a glass, I flick on a tap, and pour myself a drink of water. <sighs> what am I going to do about this, Beth? I need my boy to like me. I can't have him hate both of his parents. And you assume he hates me? Why? Uh, because the universe does. Yeah, they probably groomed him to hate me, too. A smirk appears on Beth's face. Seriously, what's that about? I don't know. I've only seen Luke get the cold once. Come on. When was it? Maybe the issue links up with this scenario. The last time he got this pissed was when my dad brought him Battlestar Galactica bedsheets. He looked like he wanted to go all Cobra Kai on my dad, although I kind of enjoyed it too. Why? Because the night before, my dad set me up with his assistant, who was a dentist, who would later give me a checkup while we were in the middle of our date. Oh, the little creep. I know, but I'm glad he did. I had a horrible toothache that day, and he helped a lot. Anyway, hang on. <clears throat> that, that, that could be. Could it? What? <laughs> what could be what's on whose universe? Maybe Luke hates people trying to make him like other sci-fi shows. Maybe he just wants us to like Star Wars. Star Trek. God, why do you always have to make me the smart one? I have ink on my robe, and I have no idea how I got there. I'm not so bright. Well, uh, what if I learned about the Star Wars? Trek. Damn it. It's like having a curse or something. You were saying? Yeah. Uh, what if I learned, and then brought him a lot of cool stuff? And then Luke could quiz you, and that way you could start your father and child bond? Ooh, I like my idea. No, my idea. I came up with it. Come on, do you really want the plan's liability if it fails? No, but I still... So isn't it wiser to give me the praise for my great mind? Good. That's agreed. What's the plan? I need to know what I'm taking credit for. All right, my uh, cousin Connor was a big trick nerd growing up. I could meet with him for breakfast, and he could fill me in on what I need to know and buy for Luke. Then he likes me. Ooh, my plan is really shaping up. Wow, I'm amazing. If only people gave out awards. Ah, uh, I'll order a fake one from Amazon later. Good, that's decided. So, Connor and I could go to a store and buy all the stuff I need. Then we can have it delivered here. Okay, solid plan. Could you also do our food shopping while you're at it? I haven't got around to it. I'm lazy. Sure. Is there anything else... No, that's it. I better head off and get some sleep. Big day tomorrow. Bye. I pick up my jacket and I look to head off. Or you could sleep here. <laughs> wink. Sorry. That was meant to be a wink. Damn, why aren't I winking better? 
I walk up to Beth and I kiss her on the cheek. I need this to go slowly. We'll get there, but not now. So, <laughs> you're confessing to being gay? I want to treat you with respect and be a gentleman about it. Good night. You didn't answer my question. Are you or aren't you? I walk to the door, laughing. The following day, I knocked on Vinny's apartment door. It's open. I open the door and walk in to find boxes covering the open spaces. Connor, who has a jaunty scarf over his neck, stands looking sad and miserable. Connor is Vinny's son from his first marriage with Michelle. Vinny was married to the then model back in the 80s. This model would go uh, later on to be his chef at his restaurant and then con him out of his life. Saving with the help of Vinny's best friend, Roman. Michelle and Roman escaped to Italy to start a new life. But while in Italy, Roman got killed in a gang-related incident. Michelle came back to America, begging Vinny to take her back. Michelle had little Connor with her, and she told Vinny that the kid was his son. But Vinny didn't believe a word of it. So, eh, Vinny rejected Michelle and had her arrested for fraud. Michelle's case didn't go forward due to lack of evidence, so she was released from jail. She soon moved to Canada to live with her mom. About a year later, Michelle died in a car crash. She had Connor in the back seat. The police took Connor into custody. They got Connor's birth certificate and traced him back to Vinny. Vinny got a DNA test done, revealing he actually was Connor's father. However, there was a contest in the custody battle for him. Michelle's parents wanted custody of Connor, but Vinny won in the end. It's been over 30 years, and Vinny's raised Connor on his own for that amount of time. Both Vinny and Connor have had a lot of ups and downs, however, they've always cared about each other. So I thought until I saw the boxes and Connor's teary face. Hey, uh, welcome home, stranger. Uh, how many people did you murder? Is it as many as my dad murders with a stare? No, I'm not that much of a killing machine yet. Thank you for the welcome, by the way. What's going on? Are you moving out? I have no option but to. The man is a monster in disguise. I hate him with all my guts. You know, it's a weird thing, but every member of our family says that about each other a lot. We've got to learn to uh, love in this family. Listen, uh, I don't need a lecture. Sorry. What's Vinny done? Murdered Kurt for kissing you at his restaurant? No. And he'd so do that to Kurt if we kissed there. Ah, oh, God, I wish he never made me. Really? No, I'm glad he did. Life is more enjoyable with me around. Simply is. I'm Wonder Man. You can say that again. <laughs> See, that's why I love you. You get me. Why can't my dad get me too? What's Vinny done now? Nothing that he hasn't done before. I just refuse to sit by and let him continue to manipulate me. Talk to me. Let me help. You can't, David. I throw my hands in the air to surrender. Well, anyway, if you want my dad, he's on a date with one of his floozies. Let's hope he gets a disease fucking dies. Hey, uh, I need your help with something meaningful. I haven't got the time. I have to meet Kurt. We're trying for a baby. I'm confused for a second. Then I realize my cousin's messing with my head. Oh, funny. You should know that if there was a possibility of gays being able to produce babies, I'd support it. Oh, good to know. <sighs> That's won you my full attention. What do you want? I need to know all about Star Wars. Damn it, Trek, Star Trek, why do we keep messing that up? You should never confuse the two. The geek community have a natural tendency to get upset when you do that. Yeah, that's what I'm finding out. Well, that's good. Because my boyfriend is a Star Wars fan, and I have way too many fights over the debate. <laughs> I've come close to suicide, you know, real close. Uh, yeah, anyway, my son hates me for mistaking the two. Oh, I heard about you spreading your seed around. Luke, is it? He sounds manly and robust. Not at all like his father, unfortunately. Uh, I'm in the army. Well, last I heard, you were a former army officer. So it doesn't count. Anyway, could you teach me all you know about Star Trek and later help me pick out which toys I should buy him? Uh, yeah, sure. Hang on. How many people do you know that have my level of expertise? No one. Why? I need to take advantage of my generosity by asking you for a favor. You know, if you were in the minority, I'd walk out. Oh, thanks. My dad refuses to accept me and Kurt. We've been talking about it for three months and he still refuses to accept us as a couple. I think maybe he's a homophobe. Ah, uh, get a new girlfriend. Problem solved. Gonna smacks me on the arm. 
You and I know that's not possible. Okay, but I think I once heard uh, him say that he liked Kurt. Really? When? I don't know. Might have been a dream. Vinny never says nice things about anyone. Look, listen. I won't lose Kurt, but I also don't want to lose my dad. He needs to accept us, or, or I don't think I'll ever be happy. So you're allowed to roll your eyes if you want. I'll be kind by not doing it in front of you. My main concern is that Kurt and I are looking to adopt next year and get married, but unfortunately, Dad's been forcing us to delay our plans. Well, why do you need his approval? I thought gays had legal rights and everything. Isn't that the official message of the Pride Parades? Or has that message been lost in translation? It hasn't. We need my dad's approval because the adoption agency will interview him. How do we show them we're good people if the most integral member of a family hates one of us? Listen, I'm sure Vinny doesn't hate Kurt. He's just old school. You do know he's Italian, right? Oh, you don't say. Plus, he's a Catholic and all that jazz. Just give him a little more time. He'll eventually have to warm up to Kurt. I know it. All right, that's a lie. I don't know. He's a dick. Kurt and I haven't got the time. Look, we both know if the adoption agency interviews Dad and he says something wrong about Kurt, it's Challenger exploding in the sky. Shrek losing Princess Fiona. Or I actually can't think of any more right now. So it could ruin your chances to adopt. (laughs) <laughs> not just in this part of town, but the whole state. We could lose everything. I'm not losing my chance to be a dad. No, well, you won't. But are you sure it's clever for me to talk to Vinny? You know, because he never listens to me. You have to try, David. We need your help so much, please. All right, all right. I'll talk to Beth. She's a lawyer. If anyone's capable of getting through to Vinny, it's her. I'll get her to talk sense to your dad. How much time do I have? I can delay moving out for another day, but it needs to be done in that time, all right? Eh, leave it to me. I got it. Great. Now take a seat in front of my laptop and your Star Trek education will begin in two minutes after I've used the restroom. Help yourself to my dad's expensive scotch. I won't grass on you, I promise. I left, and I head off to Vinny's drink station. There's a text on Connor's phone. I glance at it and it's Vinny. He's complaining about how Kurt just embarrassed him in front of his friends by asking how he is. Message goes on to say how Vinny hated the experience. Okay. Vinny, one. That man loves your son. Two. Kurt's not done anything out of the ordinary. He's being nice. Three. That's a quality of man your son deserves in his life. I don't know how fucked Vinny is right now. But I'm going to get to the bottom of this fucked up charade to make sure he never disrespects his family again. Vinny needs to learn the values of what it means to have a family. Family matters. And whether he likes it or not, Kurt is family. Vinny needs to accept that. Or I'm afraid he could lose Connor. I'd be damned if I'm the only one who sees that and doesn't act upon what I know. It's time to get to work and deal with this matter head on. It's time for the healing process to begin. There's more to come of Military Guy. Follow that love podcast on your favorite podcast app to get future episodes as soon as they drop. And if you love the podcast, well, please share it with your friends and your family. Thank you. Join us in the next episode of Military Guy, when David and his family finally confront Vinny. Plus, there's a surprise in store for David when Luke reveals his new fan status. Later, I'm staring at a laptop, looking at photos of men and women in makeup and costumes. Finally, Connor pulls up an image of a man, and he has real funny ears. Uh, alright, who's this guy? You have to know this, or your son will never trust you like to the show. Uh, Spock. I wince, not sure if I'm right. Connor is stony-faced and then laughs out loud. 
Hey, that's correct. That's 15 out of 20 characters you know by heart. So your homework is to know all 20. And? And to read up on them. I suggest you take a day or two to get study it up on your Star Trek history. And then once you got it locked, you present what you know to Lukey. It's Luke. I prefer Lukey. Well, I'm his father. What's meant to be the teacher here? Uh, you are. Apologies. Ah, good boy. I get a text from Beth. She tells me she's organized lunch with my Uncle Vinny and my ma to talk about Connor's situation. And apparently I don't need to be there. So they'll handle it for me. Hey, coolio. I hear good news. My ma, Beth and your dad are having lunch to discuss your issues. Would you like to be there to uh, make your case? Or do you want them to speak on your behalf? Uh, the latter. I can't face my dad right now. Well, then I better go study. Thanks for your help. I stand up and I hug him. I promise you, we'll sort out this mess. Thank you, David. You're lovely. If you tell anyone I've said that about you, I'll deny it and ghost you. Got it? I laugh and then walk to the door. I open and exit. Later at lunch, it's my ma and Beth. They're both at the Vinny and Ma's Italian restaurant. This restaurant has been in our family for over 45 years. We have every seat in here filled on the weekends. I grew up working in the back to earn extra pocket. I love this restaurant. It's the pride of our little community. It's a staple of the world. Oh, what? Can a, di a guy do a little shameful promoting in peace? You think you know your audience, and the truth of it is you don't. Vinny walks over and takes a seat next to Beth and my ma. David sends his apologies, but he's busy with something. Ah, that's fine. He's uh, one less idiot looking to badger me to death. Eh, that's right. I'm insulting you both. Funny. Let's get to business. Eh, what's the matter? Why are you both so gloomy? You know why, Vinny? Don't make us out to be stupid. I don't think I do that. You both do that by not noticing you're both wearing the same dress. We're not wearing... Oh, would you look at that? We're practically twinning here. Oh, I'm prettier, of course, but the resemblance is still uncanny. Look, Finn, we're here because we're both worried about your relationship with Connor. And I'm out of here. My Uncle Vinny stands up and looks to exit. Vinny, you shit the fuck down. Michael Vinny sits back down. Look, whatever your business happening with Connor and me is none of your business. Stay out of it. Vinny, you won't accept who Connor is. You always refuse to accept his boyfriend. They've dated for three years. Come on, Vin. You're better than that. And who's my son exactly? Come on, since you know him so well, maybe explain that to me. He's gay, Vinny. You've known since he was 14, it's 15 years later, and you still won't accept who he is. This is bad. You have to let him be who he is around you, Vinny. He was born who he is. I've heard enough of this. You're homophobic, Vinny. <laughs> That's a pretty big accusation to label someone. I think twice before repeating it. Oh, what, Sunshine? Because what are you going to do about it? Ha! <laughs> you nailed his impression! David says when I try it, it sounds like a cat being strangled. Oh, I aim to please, and I did. You're all welcome. Why do you hate your gay son, Vinny? I don't, okay? I don't. There are reasons why I won't accept who he is. And those reasons are? Let's not do this. Damn it, Vinny. Your kid's happiness is on the line. And you want to play games. His life isn't a game. His life is men kissing him and him letting penises go places where none have ever gone in me. Somehow, Michael and I often call each other whores. It's one of my favorite nicknames. Vinny stares at her like she's gone mental. You'll need a sense of humor, or I see a heart attack coming your way. What I need is an arrow to the brain to stop me living through this pointless scenario. Talk, Vinny. Give us the better version of the story so we can understand you better. 
Okay, look. I'm scared to accept him because of fear. I have fear. Fear you might catching him do it on your bed while you're with a chick? Look, does the name Gino Nardelli ring any bells, Leanne? No. Who is he? He was Jack Harrison's son. He died in the 80s during the AIDS crisis. Jack, your next door neighbor's son? Yes. Anyway, Gino lived a pretty high life. He would go to parties, drink, do drugs, and have a lot of sex. In the 80s, he would do most of his activities with men. Do you see where I'm going with this? What happened to him? I'll have a guess, ladies. It's pretty clear what happened. Oh, he got a disease and died. That's right. Wow. I'm so sorry for thinking you were... It doesn't matter now. Look, my fear of accepting Connor's sexuality stems from the fact that I don't want to wake up one day and find out that my son is dead. You won't. Oh, she's right. Connor's responsible. He's smart, but God knows where he gets that from. It's certainly not from your family. David's proof of that. Look, I don't want to have an exact look that Jack Harrison had when tragedy ensues on Connor. The truth of it is I'm scared. I'm afraid to lose my precious kid. You need to talk to Connor about all this. Get him to understand why you're fearful and then work through your issues together as a family. Ah, uh, nah, I'm okay. We men have tendencies not to talk. Vinny, Connor and Kurt are looking to adopt soon. They can't make progress with that without you accepting their love. I know about the adoption thing, but why do they need my support? They can easily get their baby without me. You really think an adoption agency that finds out there's strife in the family will give him a baby to adopt? Maybe. You never know. They love you so much, Vin. You have to give the same feelings back to them. It's your duty as Connor's father. It has to be done. Enough. Look, guys, I'm an Italian man. We don't talk about our feelings. We keep it trapped inside. This stems from our history. I'm not about to destroy my heritage like that. Vinny clicks his fingers. Vinny, you dumb son of a bitch. You listen to me very carefully. You will arrange to meet your son to tell him why you're going against meeting his boyfriend or I swear to God, I will take out one of my hairpins and lodge it right in your eyeballs until you die. You got it? Yes, Jesus. Why are you women so horrible? Phone him now, please. I'll do it later. Vinny, now! Vinny takes out his cell phone and dials it. Ah. Hey, Beast, I want to talk to you, it's your dad. Vinny's phone immediately rings. Uh, Vinny's been cut out. He didn't ring. Vinny, do I need to take up this case with Ma? Do you want to disappoint an old lady? Do you want to burden her? Vinny rings Connor, then shows the caller ID to Beth and Leanne. There, happy. Talk, and we'll let you know. <coughs> Uh, hey, Sunshine, it's your dad. Would you like to meet up for a drink? I, I want to talk to you about something important. No, meet me at the restaurant. I'm cooking tonight. Oh, great. Bye. See how simple that was? I'm going to go back to work. It takes off. He's not working tonight, is he? No, his shift ends in three hours. I'll call Corner and tell him to meet you and David here in two hours. Huh, speak of the devil. David wants me to help him pick up Luke from school. I better go meet him. Okay, bye. Oh, and change your dress. You don't want people thinking you're copying my dress sense. It's humiliating for you. People want the real thing. That's clearly me. Beth walks off laughing. We pick up Luke at a school. I forgot he was disabled. The kid had to be picked up and put in the back of the car. And then his wheelchair has to go in the trunk. It's an operation for the kid. And while in the car, Luke sees five boxes. They're wrapped in Star Trek wrapping paper. 
<laughs> What's this? Open it and take a look. Luke opens the present. Oh, it's the new Star Trek command ship. <laughs> nice. You could look a little more excited, honey. Uh, I am. Well, your dad went into a lot of effort to get you that ship. He actually ordered it and everything. Why do you think you're trying to find a sneaky way to irritate me? Because that's what I do. I'm a queen, moron. Why don't you like it, Luke? I, I don't know. Well, open up your next present. Maybe you'll like that one. Although, I doubt it, judging by your face. Luke opens his next present. It's a Spock doll. You got me a doll? A Spock doll? I nod my head. Luke still doesn't look excited. Honey, it's not just any doll. It's a limited edition from the 1900s or whenever Star Trek was created. I'm not a history buff, so I don't know or care. Well, thanks, David. Luke puts the doll aside. What's the matter, honey? Your dad's gone into a lot of trouble to get those things for you. And it's not like him at all, so you need to be thankful. Well, I'm not a Star Trek fan anymore. What? Why? Well, David was confused by which sci-fi show it was, which made me ask my friends which one they liked, so I asked this kid at school, and he had this cool picture on his phone of his dad's old movie poster, and it's Princess Leia in a bikini with this gross, ugly alien thing. I really liked it. I was like, I love this woman. So I googled Star Wars and fell in love with it. There you go. I, I now love Star Wars. Well, let's hope a lot less than your mother. <laughs> I can neither confirm nor deny that. You'll have to guess. Well, I guess I'll have to start again with my plan to make you like me. Well, I don't really dislike you. You don't? No. You're someone new in my life. I just want to get to know you first before I end up deciding to hate you. Oh, uh, cool. Although it does mean you'll have to try a lot harder with me. Oh, I will, I promise. And I'll probably want four Yankees tickets for a weekend game. I hear you. I'll book it later. Don't let him manipulate you. And Mom can't be at the games. She's mouthy and my friends hate her. Oh, there's do I. Oh, so, so it's settled. I say jump and you say how high. Do we understand each other? Absolutely, son. I don't know who made him like this, but I'm so fucking proud of you, honey. Can you negotiate Mom's New York contract at work for her? Well, I can give it a go. We all laugh at Luke's words, and Beth hugs Luke. Welcome to the family, David. Oh, thank you, son. That sounds so wrong. I feel like choking him every time he says nice things to me. Ah, join the club. More laughter as I get a text. Oh, it's from my ma. Apparently, Vinny's making plans to meet his new chick in a bar. He's leaving in an hour. We have to hurry. Or we'll go without talking the corner. I show Beth the text. I'll take Luke home. You deal with Vinny. Later, after dropping off Beth and Luke... I pick up Kurt and Connor. We drive to my ma's restaurant. We walk through the lobby just as Vinny is about to walk out. Hey, what's going on here? You promised Beth and Ma that you'd talk to these two. And here we are, holding you up to your words. Shall we get started? There's only one correct answer. Look, guys, I'm busy now. Can we reschedule? No. Take a seat, Vinny. Vinny doesn't move. Connor grabs him and sits him down. You ever do that again, I'll break your legs. My ma joins us at the table. Both Kurt and Connor sit down and I join them. Is he behaving himself, David? Because if Finney's not, I'll make up a rumor that he has a tiny ding-dong and spread it around town. So no one dates him. You got that, Vinny. Don't mess with the wrong people. Talk now. I've got nothing to say to you. Oh, fine. I'll start us off. Connor, your dad is worried you'll get a disease and die like one of his friend's kids did in the 80s. 
That's why he's scared to accept you and Kurt. He's scared of losing you. Aw, oh, Dad. Okay, I'm out of here. Sit. We're not done. Confirm the story. Okay, it's true. I need a beer. Dad, we have safe sex. We always use a condom. We don't sleep around. Kurt and I are both committed to each other. We're just like any young couple. We're normal. Oh, I know that. Then love your son, for God's sake. It's not so fucking hard. You can love floozies, but you can't love your own flesh and blood. What's the matter with you? Look, Kurt, Con, I support you. I may never un understand how you do the things you do to each other, but I care deeply about you. If I've not shown that in the past, I apologize. I got so lost in the crazy maze that I forgot that you two were people who just wanted me to care about. So, do you care? Do you love them? I love my son, sure. Do you love them both equally? Oh, come on, Dad. You can say it. We won't judge you. We want to hear you say you love your family, Vinny. Ah, you're all twisting my balls here, Vinny. Ah, fine. Kurt, Connor, I love you both. You mean the world to me. To be without you would be uh, having cancer in my dick and then having to cut it off. I breathe you. I never want to stand in the way of what you two have. I both support and love you both equally. Yeah, I shed it. Am I even going to get an LGBT flag tattooed on my forehead? Jesus, you happy? My ma is teary. Oh, she looks like a dam about to burst. The restaurant staff had stopped it working just to watch us. In fact, the diners of all just stopped watching to protect us. Oh, Vinny, I never knew this side of you existed. There's only one final thing left to be done. Kiss them. How about we just shake hands? I'm not going to make this event any more gayer than it needs to be. Vinny, we want a kiss. The people expect a kiss. A uh, people? Vinny looks around to see people looking at him. Some are even filming the event on their phones. <laughs> it dawns on them. They start banging on the table. Kiss! 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 My ma joins me in banging on the table. Kiss! 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 Hey, listen, you don't have to, Dad. We can keep things the way they are. I don't want to force you to do something you're not ready to do. and I still love you. That will never change. There's a vest. Oh, everyone starts chanting, Kiss! 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 Vinny sighs. You know what? The people want to see a show, and that's what they'll get. Get your beautiful lips over here. Vinny grabs Connor and kisses him on the mouth. Then he holds my ma and does the same. Vinny then grabs me and kisses me. Vinny then smiles and takes Kurt's hand into his and looks him dead in the eye. I love that you make my son happy. You are a blessing, Kurt. Vinny then kisses Kurt on the mouth. It's beautiful. Tender kiss. The room erupts into applause. There are flashes of cameras. My ma, Connor, and I then hug both Vinny and Kurt. This, this is our family. A family that will always be tight. A family that fights for each other. A family that loves each other. This folk is a family I'll always be proud to be in. Thank you for listening. And I'll see you in the next episode. Bye. There's more to come of Military Guy. Follow that love podcast on your favorite podcast app to get future episodes as soon as they drop. And if you love the podcast, well, please share it with your friends and your family. Thank you. At Ma's house for Sunday lunch. 
We're about to sit down as a family and eat it. And everyone's here except for Connor and Kurt. Eh, ah, they've gone to Canada to see Connor's grandparents. I look outside the window to see Beth playing touch rugby with Luke. Oh, Luke is having a great time. <laughs> you won't be surprised to know he's actually beating Beth. Beth crosses a finger around her neck to gesture to Luke he's dead meat. <laughs> I laugh. Why? Because in this family, this is the one I've always wanted. This family matters to me so much. Vinny sits on the couch next to me. He offers me a can of beer. I take it. He suggests we click drinks. We do it. I bet you're wondering. Wondering what? Wondering how Luke became a wheelchair user. Beth already told me he fell down the stairs. Vinny lifts an eyebrow. What? Are you telling me she's lying to me? Hey, it's none of my business. Vinny stands up and looks to exit. I grab him by the arm. It sounds like you have something to say, Vinny. Did someone hurt my Luke on purpose? Look, I don't think we should... Vinny, who hurt my son? Before Vinny can answer, Beth enters. No one hurt him. It was a bathroom accident. Oh, funny. A few days ago, you said he fell down the stairs. Oh, no, I got confused with my Uncle Gerald. You never mentioned you had an Uncle Gerald to me. That's because he used to fill me up, so I don't discuss him. God, stop analyzing everything. Beth, you gotta quit playing. Tell my nephew what happened to his son. I need the truth right now. Beth looks at Luke, wheeling away. All right, I will. Beth's just rounding up the story of what happened to Luke. So, do you think this Mason Sanchez guy ran him over on purpose? Maybe. I don't know for sure. If I did, he'd be floating by the shore by now. I'm evil. Well, it sounds like there's more left of the story. What is it? What else don't I know? Talk now. I don't want to say it's not essential. Do you want to make out? Beth... Stop changing the subject. This is important. Talk to me. Ugh, fine. I had a brief affair with Mason. He was married and he promised me he'd leave his wife and be with me. But he didn't. Why not? He had a clown fetish which creeped the hell out of me and I wouldn't do the things he wanted, so Mason chose his wife. Okay, so what happened next? One night I got myself drunk. I was lonely, so I accidentally left a message on Mason's wife's cell phone asking him to come have his way with me. And? And Mason's wife listened to the voicemail and acted. Did she run over my son? N no. No. She announced she was divorcing him, and since Mason's wife has a watertight prenup, Mason was going to get nothing in the divorce. <laughs> so he got his revenge by running over my boy. I don't think so. The police couldn't prove anything. <sighs> they tried to get CCTV pictures on the road Luke was playing soccer on, but the footage disappeared, so they couldn't find any evidence of the crime. Vinny enters. Thalamaya disappeared. I don't know what you're talking about. I need to rugby tackle my son. Excuse me. And I need to deal with this. I stand up and look to exit. Beth stops walking and grabs me by the arm. David, you can't fight him. His dad is a chief of police. He'll put you in prison. So what? I should just let him get away with hurting my son? No, but the universe will find its unique way to punish Mason. Hey, is she drunk? Oh, she sounds like she is. I'm not. Look, once my mom revealed you slept together, I prayed that you would have a heart attack. And guess what? The universe is on its way to deliver my prayers. It's just requests I keep feeding you with bacon and cheese. Huh. I am putting on weight. It's happening because the universe is repaying me. See, it works. Oh, Jesus. Anyway, are we kids? This isn't a magical fairy tale, Beth. This is real life shit. Oh, I need to deal with the Sanchez trash bag. He's about to meet Luther and Reacher. I kiss both my fists and I walk off.
I bang on the door. A tall, menacing-looking man opens the door. Who the hell are you? David Harrison. I believe you dated my ex, Beth. Mmm. Tall, leggy brunette with big, bouncy tits. Yeah, I remember her. Talk about it like that again, and I rip off your balls. Oh, funny. You're a natural comedian, David. How's your son, Luke? My son Brian goes to Luke's school. Brian tells me Luke gets bullied quite a lot. Then again, Brian would know since it's him who tortures the little puke. Mason laughs. Don't you mention my son's name ever again. Oh, what, jackass? I squirt up to Mason. He points at the camera staring at us. Don't even think about it, pretty boy. You're illegally on my property. You're about to get violent. I could quickly get out my handgun and kill you and I wouldn't go to prison. You ran over my son. I'd like for you to apologize. You trespassing on my property. I'd like for you to get on your way before I kill you. This is your last warning. Here's how things will play out. First, you'll walk over to your car. You're making me real mad, David. You'll get in and take a nice drive to my house, where you'll apologize to my son Luke for running him over. You don't know who you're messing with, do you? I can make your life Armageddon. Try it. Let's see the outcome. I could ruin your son's life, too. Haven't you heard? My 13-year-old bullies him hard at his school, David. I can get my son to hang him up by his lockers. Do you want that? Say the word and it happens. You don't want to push me, sunshine. Well, all right, then that's settled. Next time your kid comes home from school, he'll have a broken arm. Actually, I'll add broken legs to go along with that. Not that it's not already broken. I grab Mason and violently push him back against his door. He casually smiles. He's not at all threatened. I think people would say that this is assault. You'll be hearing from my lawyers and my dad, who, by the way, is a superintendent at the New Jersey Police Department. Hell awaits you, David. It awaits. Mason pushes me to the ground and then walks back into his house. I get up and bang on his door. Mason opens his door and holds a gun. He cocks it. I warned you, didn't I? Do you want to die today? I turn around and walk off. I get in my car and I speed away. I walk into Ma's house. My Ma, Leanne, shouts at me. David, is that you? Uh, who else could it be, Ma? Ma walks downstairs. Don't you get disrespectful with me. You've already done enough today. What are you talking about? Veronica Sanchez called. Am I supposed to know who that is? My mom walks over to me and slaps me across the head. Veronica is Mason's mother. Mason is Beth's ex-boyfriend. Veronica is a bingo acquaintance of mine who just called to say that she went over to her son's house to threaten Mason. Ma... I didn't do that. They're lying. Oh, really? Are they lying? So why does Veronica say she has you on camera punching her son? I didn't punch him, Ma. She's lying. I'm a saint. You know me. Yeah, and I also know how much you got yourself into trouble as a teenager. I'm not stupid, David. Oh, Ma, come on. David Russell Harrison. You stay away from that family, do you hear me? They're vile dog muck. They're nothing but trouble. So unless you foresee prison for you in the future, you'll avoid them at all cost. Are we clear on that? <sighs> yeah, but you need to know Mason confessed to running over Luke. What? Mason ran over my son on purpose because Beth did something. Well, how do you know? Have you got proof? I think a confession is enough evidence, Ma. You watch your tone. I'm not in the playing mood. I only want justice for my son, Ma. Then get justice through legal channels. 
don't use your fists. I can't just sit back and allow someone to get away with hurting my son. Mason will be punished. You're just like your father. You're stubborn and you think with your fists. But do you know who ends up paying for your actions? It's us, the women and the kids. I'm sorry, Ma, but I will act and correct Mason's behavior, even if I have to pay a price for it. Oh, well, then you're fucking stupid. I can't even look at you right now. Excuse me. Ma, come on. Please don't hate me. Whatever happens from now on, you stay the hell away from the Sanchez family. You don't do that. They've promised to press charges. Do you understand? I've done my part. I wish you all the best, David. I really do. And my ma walks off. Luke wheels into the house. Hey, Luke, buddy. Do you want to... Don't talk to me. Luke wheels away. Beth walks in and glares at me. What did I do now? Um, let's see. You went over to Mason's house and you threatened him. And I didn't, but carry on. In return, he told his son to make Luke's life hell in school and outside school. Excuse me? Brian, Mason's son, just sent Luke a threatening message promising to kill him at school tomorrow. What the fuck? Are we playing this game of pretending you didn't know this was going to happen? Listen, I'll sort it out. I won't let Luke be harmed. That's right. He won't. I know this because you'll stay out of his goddamn business. Have you got that? Yeah, okay, Jesus. Luke, honey, pack up your stuff. We're leaving. Beth, please stay with me. Stay here. Come on. Hurry up, Luke. Vinny, who's in the corner drinking a beer, waves me over. I walk over to him. Hmm. That family need dealing with. I have to stay out of it. Last week, this mason prick charged me three times as much to get my car real lights fixed. Mm, I'm still keeping myself clear of him. I looked up the prices on the internet, and I confronted him, and he laughed in my face. Yeah, a lot of people don't need the motivation to do that anyway. Ah, funny. Anyway, this mason prick said I wouldn't get back my car unless I paid him. Ah, they took the piss out of me. We have to act. If you don't act... Then I will. No, Vinny. We'll stay well clear of it. That's an order. Ah, right, all right. Well, then I better head off. The broad's waiting for me at my apartment. You're not leaving this alone, are you? Oh, you bet I ain't. Vinny walks over to the door. He opens the door and grabs his jacket and leaves the door ajar for me. After I beat, I joined him by walking out. It's a day later. Me, Vinny, my dad, and Jack Harrison. We all met up for a drink at my parents' house yesterday. We discussed the issue of Mason and his son, Brian. But crucially, we decided not to act. Look, if this creep and his son leave our Luke alone, I say we leave it there. If they don't, we kidnap them, take them to the woods, and let them dig their own graves. No violence. We keep the peace. We keep it at all costs. Listen, people like this don't just play fair. I'm telling you, the Mason creep will hit harder. Bullies always do. When it comes to the point where the man has to face his fears and deal with the situation man to man. This is that time. Look, I push this issue, and my relationship with Beth deteriorates. I can't risk that. I have to leave it alone. Well, maybe you don't have to do anything. I mean, we can take care... No, Vinny. I want Mason left alone. That's an order. Well, you're the definition of a chicken, if you ask me. So, there we have it. We won't touch Mason under conditions that Mason don't order his son, Brian, to touch Luke at the school. If Luke's touched, then it's present for Mason. Why? Hm. You see... Vinny and Jack know a guy who works for a superintendent at the New Jersey PD office. The superintendent, well, as Mason's dad, the super guy is. 
You won't be surprised to know. Hmm. <laughs> Not well liked. A few people want to bring down Mason's dad. The guy Vinny and Jack know is, uh, hunting for superintendent's job. So, as you can imagine, this guy's willing to do anything to knock Mason's dad off his high horse. So that's where Vinny comes in. Vinny, unbeknownst to me, broke into Mason's house. Using his contacts in the police, Vinny managed to get a supply of drugs which he planted in Mason's house while he was sound asleep last night. It was stored in the goddamn place. Now Mason has a past involving arrests for supplying drugs to known drug dealers. Mason has been arrested three times for it. Unluckily for Mason, he's on this final warning. Do you see where this is going? You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. No, Vinny isn't that bastardly. He plays fair. Yesterday, Vinny warned Mason that he'd go to jail if Mason's son touched Luke. Vinny also warned him he had 24 hours to come over to my house and apologize for running him over. Mason had to also talk to Brian, his son, and to apologize for bullying Luke. Now, I've been home all day. And there's still no sign of Mason O'Brien. Eh, so Vinny, not gonna be very happy. Beth walks through the school hallway. She's just been called to come to Luke's school right away. There's been a report of fighting at the school between Brian, Mason's son, and Luke. And Luke's been injured. Brian claimed that Luke called him a Nazi. Both sets of parents have been called. However, I have not been. I guess I'm not on the school's list. Beth opens the principal's office. She catches Luke alone with Brian hitting Luke. Brian hits Luke without a hint of mercy. Beth ran over to pull Brian off Luke. Beth does her best to protect her son. And Luke bleeds. His forehead is already bandaged. Brian tries to, with all his power, to get to Luke. Beth stands her ground, protecting Luke. The office door opens and the principal, Mason and Mason's girlfriend, enter. Brian claims Beth hit him. Mason's girlfriend smacks Beth right in the eye. Later, the doorbell rings. I answer the door. I open the door to find Beth with a black eye. Luke has a bandaged forehead. He wheels himself into the house and goes into the den. What happened to you? <sighs> Have a guess, Einstein. Mason? Yep. Luke's school principal called to tell me Luke was injured. Okay. Well, why wasn't I called? That's not important. Anyway, I walked into the school to find Luke in the principal's office being sucker punched by Brian. Oh, the little bastard. Yep, that's now what I call him. I smile. Anyway, you tried to break it up. The principal walked in and then Brian claimed that I hit him. And just behind the principal, guess who walked in? Mason. Not just Mason, but his new girlfriend, too. Brian claimed you hit him, didn't he? Yep. Hence the black eye from Mason's new girlfriend, the Whore of Babylon. I want to deal with this. There's no point. The principal called the police. They arrested the Whore of Babylon, and I need to put ice on my eye. Well, I'm sorry for all this, Beth. I really am. The doorbell rings. I answer it. Mason walks in. There are three police officers behind him. Well, hello, family. All right, what the hell do you want? Uh, David Harrison? That's me. David, I'm arresting you on suspicion of assault and battery. What the actual fuck is happening here? You do not have to say anything, but anything you do say could be used as evidence in your trial. Cuff him. An officer walks up to me with cuffs. I try to grab Mason, but he moves out of the way, laughing. I'm gonna get you for this! Oh, hell. You'll be in jail. The police cuffs me and leads me away. You won't get away with this. I'm a lawyer. He won't stay locked up for long. He'll get out and your life will be hell. Yeah, 
about that, you won't be representing him. What? What have you done now? What are you up to? Mason moves out of the way. Hmm. Surprise. The female police officer walked in. You're being arrested too, bitch. Mason smiles. I think I'm gonna enjoy this. Luke wheels himself over. Ma'am, I'm here to arrest you. Beth, I'm arresting for assault and battery on a minor. Kiss your law career goodbye. You do not have to say anything, but anything you do say will be used as evidence. Take her away. Enjoy being beaten up in jail. Beth is cuffed and led away. Luke, honey, call your grandma to pick you up. I won't be arrested for long. Beth's led away. The officers disperse. The front door is closed. It's just Luke and Mason alone in the house. How would you like to spend the night at my house, Luke? Brian wants to chat with his fists. Luke wheels away, but Mason stops him from leaving. Uh, uh, uh. We're not done here. We're not done by a long mile. Mason laughs sinisterly. <laughs> There's more to come of Military Guy. Follow that love podcast on your favorite podcast app to get future episodes as soon as they drop. And if you love the podcast, well, please share it with your friends and your family. Thank you. We're back where we last left off in episode 5. Luke wheels away, but Mason stops him from leaving. Uh uh, we're not done here. We're not done by a long mile. Mason laughs sinisterly. There's a banging on the door. Vinny stands outside waiting. Luke, open up. Uncle Vin. Mason puts his hand over Luke's mouth. Luke, what's the matter? Are you okay? Who's there with you? Luke bites Mason's hand. Uncle Vinny, help! Mason slaps Luke across the face, and Luke falls out of his wheelchair. Meanwhile, Vinny's trying to open the door with his shoulder, but it's not budging. He decides to kick it open instead, and the door goes flying open. Vinny sees Luke bleeding from the mouth on the floor as Mason stands all proud next to him. Aw, oh, you're a dead man. Step away from the kid! I've done what I need to do. Luke, Brian will see you at school. He can't wait. Mason walks towards Vinny. Vinny sucker punches him in the balls, then opens the front door and kicks him from behind. Mason exits laughing. I'll get you for that. Vinny shuts the door, and he races over to Luke. Are you okay? Did Brian hit you again? Where is he? It wasn't Brian, it was Mason. Oh, that son of a bitch. Luke, get yourself some ice cream while I handle this. Mason had my mom and dad arrested too. I know. I saw them get caught out of the way by the police. I'll handle this. Luke goes away to the kitchen to get ice cream. Vinny takes out his cell phone and he calls Jack Tyler, his next door neighbor. You know, the Godfather type guy from episode 2? Scared the life out of me? Ooh, I'm shaking just thinking about him. I hey, ate Jack. It's Vin. The little shit had my nephew. And his girl arrested and then slapped the shit out of our Luke. I want his head on a platter. Could you get one of your guys around the Masons? I want Mason taught a lesson for messing with us. No, I don't want him beaten enough to know he should never cross us again. That's all. Thanks. After that, I'll call a friendly detective to get Mason arrested for the drug possession planted in his house. Thank you. Talk soon. It's three hours later. Beth and I are released. We weren't charged with anything. The CCTV cameras in the school where Brian and Luke go, uh, showed Brian hitting Luke and Beth, trying to stop the fight. She did nothing wrong. As for me hitting Mason, yeah, there's no proof I did that either. Although Mason claimed to have footage of the incident, there wasn't any clear picture of me hitting him. We're back home. Vinny's filling us in on what we missed after the, uh, arrest. Mason hit my boy. Oh, that's what Luke says. I need to handle this. Sit down, David. We don't need to do anything. Mason has something terrible coming his way. I know it. Vinny, 
winks at me. What was that? You winked at him. Are you two in cahoots about something? Should I even ask? Well, not unless you want to be an accomplice to our evil acts. Then I'll stay quiet and hope to death Mason rots in jail. I kiss Beth as she walks away. A minor accident happened to Mason an hour ago. He's not severely injured. He just uh, dislocated his shoulder. He's okay. Did one of Jack's men do something? No, the man took it to task himself. Damn, he frightens me. Yeah, join the club. Vindy gets a text. Ah, we have further good news. About the drugs? Yeah, police found it. It's even better because the superintendent from the New Jersey police was at home too. So, <laughs> guess what? The police think the super guy was part of the crime. Which means? The super guy has no legal routes to come after us. So we're in the clear. We're safe. Ah, you know it. Vinny checks his watch. Hey, uh, look, pretty boy. Connor's flight lands in half an hour. I've got to go pick him up. Will you be all right? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be fine. Hey, uh, thanks for looking out for us. Hey, we're family. This is what families do for each other. You actually mean that, don't you? You're developing a heart. <laughs> My Uncle Vinny has a soul. It's like discovering Darth Vader is Luke's father in Star Trek. Uh, wars. How on earth do I keep messing that up? Vinny takes a sip of his beer. Whatever. I'm gonna go. I'll speak to you later at dinner. Hey, David, I expect proper beers later. None of these female beers you have in the house for your man, Beth. Are we clear on that? I'll do food shopping later. Ah, good boy. Bye. Vinny takes another can of the said female beers and exits. Later, Beth takes a cake out of the oven. My ma is whisking something next to her. Beth puts the tray on the countertop. I walk over to her and I kiss her from behind. Okay, Connor's back home. Vinny's at the restaurant. Uh, thanks for the update, ma. I really needed it. Dick, Vinny's a better kisser. What? You've kissed Vinny? Beth turns and has a smile on the face. She played me. Oh, ha ha. What was the kiss for? Eh, no particular reasons. He wants to spray his semen into your loins. Jesus, Ma, who says that? Well, every man from the beginning of time, that's who. Please don't pretend you're against it. Well, on this occasion, I'm against it. Talk about making everybody awkward, Jesus. Do you like Beth or not? Well, yeah, I like her. Do you want to be with her? You... Don't have to answer that. <laughs> he does if he expects to win you back. Answer me, dummy. Well, yeah, I want to be with Beth. Good. Then why the fuck has it taken you six weeks to tell her that? God, claim your woman. Claim your woman? Yes, mark your territory. Be a dog about it. Before someone else takes your place. Let me tell you. There's a queue of men wanting to thrust their rods down her pipe, A-line. Do, do you hear yourself? It's one of my greatest pleasures in this life. I'm delightful. All my bingo friends think so. You won't change me, David. You won't. So let me get this straight. I should brand Beth to make her mine. No. Just please take her out for dinner. You two need romance. You need time alone to process what happened the last couple of days. Isn't that what couples do? So, fucking do it. Do you wanna? Do you wanna go out on an official date? Oh, she'd love to. That's settled. Go now. I'll call the restaurant. I'll tell them to expect you. You two better have a great night. Beth, I want my son to at least propose to you by the end of the night. All right. That's enough, Ma. If David hasn't proposed by the end of the night, I'll enjoy hanging him from a tree. Is that understood, David? It should. I mean business today. How in the hell does the universe allow you to say these things? My God, just go. We'll expect you back here at midnight. I'll take Luke home with me so we can play Call of Duty. Yeah, and I'm sure he'll love that experience. Oh, he will. 
Now, please, don't let the door hit you on the backside on your way out. Have fun, bitches. Beth laughs and exits. I follow her. Beth takes her handbag and I take my jacket and the keys and we walk out of the house. Driving Beth to Ma and Uncle Vinny's restaurant. We're both uh, quiet. There's nervous energy between us. Why are we so quiet? I'm nervous. This is our first date since, you know. Yeah, but it shouldn't be this awkward. We're adults, for God's sake. Let's grow a pair. Wait, you can grow one? Beth laughs and slaps me on the arm. You know what I mean, dumbass. Can I tell you... Why, I might be nervous. Yeah. As long as you don't expect me to tell you why I am too. The reason is, I've dreamt of this for too long. I've dreamt of what it would feel to have you in my arms for too long now. Uh, you sound a little gay there, David. Okay, you see, women surprise me. You spend all your life complaining to men that they don't open up enough and then... One does, and you call him out to be gay? What do you want from us? Jeez, I was kidding. Don't have a tantrum, it's okay. I like this half-man, half-girl routine you have going on. It's cute as a baby elephant at a zoo. I think I want to admit that I... I want to be with you. For the first time in my life since I've known you, I want to put all my chips in the play where you're concerned. You thrill me. You breathe life into me. Without you, I starve of oxygen. Nice. I look at Beth, waiting for her to say other words, but she doesn't. Nice? That's all I get after that speech? What do you expect me to say back? Oh, I don't know. How about you like me back or something that hints those feelings there that involve me? I look at Beth, expecting her to say something. But I put on the radio and she says nothing. Led Zeppelin, a whole lot of love, plays on the radio. So I turn up the music. Beth looks out the window as I furiously stare at the road. This night, it don't bode well for us. We sat down eating our food. Vinny's our server. He walks over with a bottle of red wine, and he puts it down. Hey, you two okay? Yeah, we're fine. You sure? Because you both look like you just uh, fell onto a razor groin first. We're fine, Vinny. <laughs> All right, well then sort out your faces. You're scaring my customers. I don't need to get scared. Right, because I'm scared enough from your terrible customer service. Hey, you know it. In the exits. A man admit he likes you and he wants to be with you. And you reject that like a depressed penguin mother rejecting his chicks. Yeah, well, you put me on the spot. What well, spot is that? You're single. I'm single. We're good together. We know we're great in bed. So this should be an easy decision for you to make. You should take me back. And I would, but. Oh, but there's a stumbling block. Yes. Vinny walks over. Ah, you two are talking again, I see. Vin, we need a moment. Yeah, well, I need to know why you two aren't getting along. Your ma wants me to interrogate you. Stay out of it, Vinny. Ah, all right, all right. There's no need to get flustered. Makes you look as red as a fire hydrant. Vinny walks off. All right. Tell me, what's the stumbling block, Beth? I have a secret that I've been keeping from you. Oh, uh, I knew he had too much of a big nose to be my son. Hey, dummy, he is your son. It's not that. Oh, well, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping to rescind my duties as Luke's father. Damn, I could have run a mile. Remember when you slept with my mother? Yeah, I remember that. She was horrible in bed, by the way. But you know what? She did bite my neck like you did, so you must have learned something from her. Anyway, you cheated because I cheated on you in college. Yeah, 
Where's this going? I don't want to say this, but I think what I'm about to say is vital if we're going to build a solid relationship without secrets. Okay, just spit it out already. The guy I cheated with, uh, you know him. He's in our life. As Beth says that, Vinny walks up to us with a smile. I take a look at him with rage and Vinny steps away. I need fresh air. We need to talk this out, David. I stand up and walk out of the restaurant. Beth follows me. David, I'm wearing high heels. I can't walk that fast. I take off running. Beth is left behind. Vinny follows Beth out the restaurant and Vinny walks over to her. You need to tell him the truth before Leanne blarts it out. If she does before you do, it's all out warfare. Don't you think I know that, Vinny? Beth takes out her cell phone and calls me. The call goes unanswered. I'm still running. I walk into my ma's house and Luke's in the garden flying his toy helicopter. My mom puts a tray of cookies into the oven. Then she takes a cloth and wipes down the kitchen counter. She takes a sip of a Coke and sits on a chair. I walk over to her. Ah, oh, where's your beautiful bride? I shrug and take a seat next to her. What's the matter? Why are you sad? What makes you think I'm sad? I'm your mother. I know when my son looks like he's just discovered a dead body. Jesus, Ma, come on! Stop making everything so grim! Talk, now. Well, Beth revealed I know the person she slept with in college. And apparently, the person is in my life. Well, it's not me. I'm too attractive for her. No one thought it was you, Ma. Oh, because you don't think I can get her? Is that what you're insinuating? You know what? I'm just gonna blow past that, Ma. Do you want to know who it was? Oh, do you know too? No. I'm asking if you want Beth to tell you who that person is. Because if you ask me, it might bring you more trouble than it's worth. You have to play this safe. I don't know, Ma. I guess I'm just devastated. I want to make it work with Beth. Then make it work. The secret will still be in the background. Then find out who the person best slept with is and move on. I'm not sure if I find out. You'd be able to forgive Beth? Yeah. Well, if you love Beth enough, anything is possible. You just need to be brave and tackle this problem head on. We raised our son to be strong and courageous. Right now, he looks as strong as a paper straw. Uh, well... That helps. Thanks, Ma. Oh, you're welcome. The door opens. Beth stands and she walks over to us. It wasn't Vinny. I fucking beg your pardon? I know your mom thinks it was Vinny, but it wasn't. I promise. Oh, darling, I didn't say it was. Oh. My Ma heads off to check on Luke. Who was it, then, if it wasn't Vinny? I'm scared to say. I need the truth, Beth. If I tell you... Can you try and be mature about this? Look, I can't try. We both know I'm stupid. Beth takes a deep breath and I wait. She grabs my hand and holds me. Finally, she looks me in the eye and she says, The man I cheated on you with was Connor. I was the first and only chick he ever slept with. I'm sorry. I get up. David, don't even think about it. I need a walk. You went into the army, and I was lonely. Oh, so it was my fault. I'm to blame for this. I'm not saying that. I needed someone to talk to, and he was there. Yeah, they're stabbing me in the back. It meant nothing. Okay, so you sleep with my cousin, and you told me it meant nothing. Well, he's gay now, so that should prove my point that it didn't mean anything. I need to leave. Don't hurt him, David. Oh, I'm not going to hurt Connor. I'm not even going to speak to him. And you know why that is? Why? I'm leaving town for a few weeks. I need a break from you. I need a break from this whole family! You have a son, David. You have responsibilities! You can look after him yourself. It's not like you haven't kept him out of my life. His whole life already! Come on, David, I'm sorry. 
Telling you the truth is the hardest thing I've ever done. You have to believe me. You just stay away from me, okay? I told you the truth so we'd have a clean slate. I didn't want us to have any secrets moving forward. I was protecting us from future breakdowns. I didn't want to risk losing you again, and you know why that is, dummy. It's because I love you. I love you with my whole heart. You mean the world to me. Oh, yeah? Well, I don't feel the same way. You're saying that because you're hurt. Give it a few days. You'll feel differently, I know it. You know what? I'll never feel the same way about you ever again. You don't mean that. Actually, I frickin' do. Wish I never met you. You're the biggest regret in my whole life. You're saying you wish we never had Luke? Well, maybe I am. Luke is my biggest mistake. Luke was into the kitchen. He heard everything. Honey, your dad didn't mean any of that. He's lashing out at me. It has nothing to do with you. Then why was he looking at me when he said it? David, you're angry, but that's no excuse to lash out at our son. Please apologize now. I stay silent. David, I need you to say sorry right now. I continue to stay silent. You're unbelievable. I'm walking away. How long will you be gone? I don't know. Can we call you? Luke might want to stay in touch with you. He's your son, David. He needs his father. I don't think I need a jerk like him in my life. Beth, I need a total break from you guys. I have things to figure out. My head is not right. There are too many things bubbling under the surface, and I need a goddamn timeout. David, come on. You're acting out of sorts here. Goodbye, Luke. I hate you, Dad. I hope you die. I walk to the front door. I open it, and I walk out. Beth follows me. David! Luke didn't mean that. David, I'm sorry! I get into my car, and I drive off. Later, I'm at the airport. Show my boarding pass and head towards the plane. I'm heading to Miami to see a couple of Miami pals. Look, folks, I know I'm the bad guy here, but Beth has destroyed everything I've ever wanted. There's no turning back for us. Our lives would kill our dreams for the future. I need a clean slate. There are no more roads for us to travel down. We're kaput. Military Guy Season 1 was read to you by me, Emerson Peary, and written by Joao Nasita.